there is an alternative formula for the price elasticity of demand which is mathematically equivalent to the one we have discussed. It states that the price elasticity of demand can be calculated as the derivative of log Q with respect to log P. If you haven't seen these types of derivatives before, then you will likely find this expression more confusing than helpful. However, for certain functions, it does allow for easy calculation of the elasticity. Let's consider again the demand function Q equal to 4 divided by P. If I take the log of both sides, I get log Q equal to log of 4 minus log of P. The derivative of log Q with respect to log P cannot trivially be found to be equal to minus 1. This formula is useful for power functions, but useless for linear functions. For linear functions, use dQ dP times P over Q. Let's look at one of the main reasons for why elasticity is such a popular measure. Again, Q is a given demand function. The derivative dQ dP has important information. It tells us how responsive demand is to changes in prices. However, the main problem with the derivative is that it depends on units. For example, let's say that we are looking at the market demand for gasoline in a given country and that we measure Q in liters and P in the national currency, for example, euro. The derivative will then be measured in liters per euro and such a number will be hard to interpret and even more difficult to use if you want to compare demand dependence between, say, two countries. On the other hand, the price elasticity of demand is also a measure of how demand reacts to changes in prices, but this measure is unit free. This is easy to see using our example. The derivative is measured in liters per euro. We multiply the derivative by P over Q to get the elasticity. P is measured in euro and Q in liters. The units cancel and the elasticity has no units. This should not be too surprising. The percentage change is always unit free and the elasticity is approximately the ratio of two percentage changes. So this is really why we multiply the derivative by P over Q. It's the only way to get a unit free measure of how sensitive Q is to changes in P. A unit free measure is much simpler to interpret. If the price elasticity of demand for gasoline is minus 0.03, then it makes no difference if we have measured quantity in liters, gallons or pints, and it makes no difference which currency we have used. Minus 0.3 means that a 1% increase in the price of gasoline in whatever currency will reduce the demand by approximately 0.3% in whatever units you use for volume. It also makes it much simpler to compare demand sensitivities between, say, countries. Let's define what we mean by elastic and inelastic demand. Epsilon is the price elasticity of demand at the given price P. Keep in mind that epsilon is a function of P and epsilon will be different for different prices. Now, epsilon is nearly always a negative number. The only exception is if the good is a given good. We can remove the minus sign by taking the absolute value of epsilon. If the absolute value of epsilon is greater than 1, then we say that demand is elastic at the given price P. In this case, increasing P by 1% will lead to a decrease in demand by more than 1%. If demand is elastic, then it is price sensitive. The demand for a good tends to be elastic if the good has close substitutes. If there is an increase in price, then consumers tend to abandon the good for a substitute and demand will fall by a lot, making the demand for the good elastic. On the other hand, if the absolute value of the price elasticity of demand is less than 1, then we say that demand is inelastic. Inelastic demand means that the demand is not very price sensitive. Consumer will not reduce their demand very much if there is an increase in the price. Goods that are essential with no close substitutes tend to have an inelastic demand. Insulin is often given as an example of a good with a very inelastic demand. You should memorize which one is which since these two concepts tend to come back over and over in microeconomics. I think it's useful to think of elasticity of materials. For example, a rubber band is very elastic. 
small forces will change its size significantly just like small price changes will change demand significantly if demand is elastic. Keep in mind that demand may be elastic at one price but inelastic at another price. However, it is common to see statements such as the demand for gasoline is inelastic. Such a statement really means that demand for gasoline is inelastic at the current price or at prices close to the current price, not necessarily that demand is inelastic for every price. For a certain class of demand functions, the price elasticity of demand will be constant and independent of P. Let's say that our demand function is an arbitrary power function. Q equal to C times P raised to minus alpha, where C and alpha are strictly positive but arbitrary constants. To find the derivative, dQ dP, we take the exponent minus alpha in front and decrease the exponent by one unit. dQ dP is equal to C times minus alpha times P raised to minus alpha minus one. To get epsilon, we take this derivative and multiply it by p over q, replacing q with c times p raised to minus alpha. You can see that the c's will cancel. We have three terms involving powers where the base is p. If you look at the first two, p raised to minus alpha minus 1 multiplied by p, remembering that this is really p raised to 1, we add the exponents, minus alpha minus 1 plus 1 is equal to minus alpha. The product of p raised to minus alpha minus 1 times p is equal to p raised to minus alpha, and this will cancel with the p raised to minus alpha in the denominator. No p's left in our expression. The only thing that remains is the minus alpha. The price elasticity of demand will be equal to minus alpha for all positive prices p. For example, if c is equal to 4 and alpha is equal to 1, then q is equal to 4 divided by p. According to our result, epsilon is equal to minus 1, which we found in an earlier exercise, much less general than this one.